This is an NBC News special report. Here's Craig Melvin. Oh, we have some breaking news right now. We're about to get an update from officials in Maine on that manhunt for Robert Card. Card is the accused gunman in Wednesday night's deadly shooting rampage at a bar in the bowling alley in the town of Lewiston. Uh, we can tell you that overnight a search warrant was executed at a property belonging to the Card family. No arrests were made, but let's listen in to law enforcement officials right now all that a tremendous amount of law enforcement manpower time and effort is being utilized around the clock literally around the clock in every effort to apprehend the suspect and as well as to safeguard this community as the chief of the lewiston maine police department i am extremely thankful for the community's outpouring of support being offered during this tense and trying time I extend my deepest appreciation for all of our law enforcement partners who have responded from literally, literally around this nation. Again, I will ask the community to be as patient as possible with this process, realizing that there are many, many moving parts in coordination of efforts 
involved between multiple agencies. We will attempt to provide as much information possible as this investigation proceeds forward. We would also like to acknowledge and thank the many businesses, restaurant owners, individuals who have provided meals and other essential items to support the, an investigation of this magnitude. Following this press conference, details will be shared regarding counseling locations, where somebody can make a donation if, if necessary and, or, or, or asked, and the hostel, hosting of several different vigils. vigils I'm sorry. On behalf of hundred, the hundreds of law enforcement officers who have descended upon our great city over the last three days, we want to extend our heartfelt support as well as our sympathies to the victims and families involved in this senseless tragedy. Thank you, and I'll turn it back over to Mike. Thank you, Chief. I appreciate that. So I, I guess for starters, uh, I want to make sure that we always take a moment to acknowledge uh, the victims, their families, and how this is uh, negatively impacting uh, the state of Maine, uh, the city of Lewiston, and really our entire country. What we know when these things uh, occur around our country, we are all so incredibly focused on uh, what happened, and then we try to get to the why. And there are certainly times when we can't quite figure out the why, uh, because every one of these situations is so tragic, uh, so outside of the norm, uh, that it makes it difficult uh, for community members of all types in all locations, East Coast, West Coast, it doesn't matter, to fathom how these kind of things can occur uh, in the greatest country in the world. Uh, so we're going to continue to work towards that. And as a piece of this, uh, I wanted to come in and, and uh, really speak to the partnership uh, that we are committed to to have with you. Uh, and as we start to uh, really flow into an operational period, we have more of a pattern to see what we're doing day in and day out. Uh, I'm going to commit to you to have a morning briefing uh, every day at 10 o'clock right here uh, in this location. Uh, as you can imagine, some of those briefings may be longer than others. Uh, but I want you to know that you're going to see us in the morning. Uh, so, and we're going to go over what happened overnight, and we're going to kind of talk about what the plan of the day is. Uh, and I'll speak to that plan of the day uh, here in just a second. Uh, I would also say that uh, we will certainly be considering afternoon briefings as well. Uh, if something new came up or something uh, that we believe uh, would be helpful for you to know and the communities to know, uh, then we'll uh, get back to you. Either way, uh, you will receive a communication from our PIO, Shannon Moss, uh, either saying we're going to have a briefing or we're not, uh, so that you kind of have uh, some idea of what your day and your afternoon is going to look like as well. So I would also say that uh, these daily briefings, as you can imagine, will be more operational in nature, uh, that our families, our communities, our loved ones are always going to be in the forefront of our mind and certainly in our hearts. Uh, but we do want to talk to you about this is what we're going to do, this is what we did, because uh, I know that's incredibly important to you. Uh, and then you're going to share that appropriately with, uh, with your viewers, with your readers. Uh, and that's going to help everybody start that healing process as well. I know uh, that information is power. Uh, you also know uh, that there's going to be times that I won't be able to give you all the information that you need, or certainly that you want. Uh, and that won't be done uh, because uh, we're just not going to tell them. That's going to be done because from an operational standpoint or a tactical standpoint, uh, there are safety concerns. Uh, that I have for our first responders and that we all have for our community members. Uh, so please keep that in mind. Um, and uh, I will go back to like a Q&A kind of a period. Uh, we want to allow that opportunity uh, and we're going to try to do the best we can. Uh, but if in my mind the math starts leading to, well, I'm going to get asked 10 questions and I can't answer nine of them, um, then maybe that's uh, counterproductive to a certain extent. So we're going to try to front load as much information as we can, again, uh, with these particular sessions. Um, so that is kind of the plan uh, moving forward. Uh, and to speak to today's uh, briefing in particular, uh, I would tell you that the overnight hours, uh, and we are on 24-7, and we will be, uh, until uh, the suspect in this case, again, is brought to justice. So overnight, uh, our officers, our investigators, uh, and that's investigating, and I say our, I'm talking about local, county, state, federal, uh, all of our partners, have uh, been continuing to work 530 plus tips and leads uh, that have come in uh, from the general public, uh, from a number of communities, a number of different relationships. 
Um, and as you can imagine, those vary greatly, uh, depending on uh, that individual's knowledge of what happened uh, and what they want us to do about that. So we're continuing to check those things off the list as we go. Uh, we're also continuing to do searches at the two primary uh, venues here, uh, the one uh, being Schmenji's Bar and Grill, and the second being the Spare Time Bowling Alley. Uh, I will tell you that there's, it's going to be easy to think, well, how come, what's taking them so long to work these scenes, right? Um, and because everything we watch uh, gets solved in an hour, and it's all taken care of. But for an or, in order for us to do our jobs, uh, to be professional about what we do, be respectful of the victims and the families that we're working with in the process within which we work. Uh, we have to take our time. Um, we're going to be processing every square inch of these facilities. Uh, not only do you have the victims in question, but every one of those rounds that got fired need to be investigated. Every one of those cartridges that lays on the ground needs to be collected. The vehicles that are in those parking lots, everything that we do around this, uh, we need to be careful. Uh, we need to be professional, and that's what we're committed to do. So I would expect that we're still days away uh, from completing uh, those particular uh, investigations, those particular crime scenes. Uh, so you'll continue to see uh, us at those locations without question. Uh, and because of that, there are also affidavits, and affidavits are essentially the first step in a search warrant or an arrest warrant or whatever that looks like. So we're continuing to draft affidavits ultimately for search warrants around any kind of digital media uh, that we're hoping to attain or investigate. Uh, that could be phones, that could be computers, that could be video from any location. Uh, so our officers, our investigators continue to work on, on that material. Uh, and so that's a lot of that stuff overnight, as well as using uh, that three o'clock, that four o'clock in the morning, using that time frame to kind of plan out what the next day is going to look like. Uh, so we've tried to get some people rotated through for operational periods. We're going to get them some rest. Now let's plan what the next day is going to look like. We have a morning briefing, which is kind of kicks off and says, this is what's going to happen. We need a team to go do this. We need a team to go do that. This is who our team leads are. This is the process. And then we let those folks loose to go do the good work. Uh, and we're going to try to share some of that information uh, with you. So um, as we discuss that, uh, we have some maps and some other additional information up here uh, with us right now. Um, I will talk about a couple of these uh, locations here to the best of my ability. Um, obviously, there's a lot of us here. Uh, and this is an ideal as far as these maps go. Uh, but if you look at this boat launch overview as an example, this dot here is that Lisbon boat launch uh, area that uh, we've discussed. That's where the suspect's vehicle was located ultimately, uh, that white Subaru uh, station wagon. Uh, and I will also say that uh, we'll have these three primary maps, but this QR code here, uh, and whether you can get it from your seats or come up after the fact, will give the digital version of those so you have those readily available. Uh, you certainly understand how all of that works. So we talk about uh, that boat launch area, and that particular uh, location is 501 Lisbon Street. Uh, Pajebscot Landing. Pajebscot Landing is at this location. I believe we have some, some of our friends from the media that are out in that area now. Um, and what will happen in this general location today is that we will be putting uh, divers uh, in the water along that Androscoggin River, which you see here. Uh, and that's going to look like a couple of different things. Uh, so the very first thing that you're going to see out there is you're going to see some air resources that will fly over this particular area. And they're looking to see what can we clear from the air. Do I have to put divers in that particular area or can I tell from the top based on the current and how muddy the water is and all those other things, can I see to the very bottom here? Uh, and uh, so that's gonna start this entire process. Then there's gonna be some screening and some divers that are actually in the water that may start on this side uh, by the boat launch and will continue on this side. I would envision at some point that we'll be moving over to these particular locations here uh, for ground searches as well. Uh, so, that's going to that's gonna look like a bunch of different things. Uh, so they could be dragging a diver behind them, literally, while that diver is checking uh, for evidence, checking for potential bodies. Um, and I would also say that uh, while this is going to look like a major focus today with a lot of people, we have a lot of other irons in the fire. So I'm not seer saying that the suspect, we, we know the suspect is in the water and this is what we're doing. Uh, what I'm telling you is you're going to see a lot of activity here. 
uh, and I'm going to tell you that in advance. Uh, we've got nothing to hide in that regard at all. Um, so then you're going to have some sonar as well that's going to be utilized here. Uh, and that can Authorities revealing there uh, that they are working uh, some 500 plus tips, tips, continuing searches at both that. shooting scenes. And Bottom line, though, that. the suspect, the 40 year old uh, Andrew Card remains, excuse me, Robert Card remains at large. The manhunt ongoing. Uh, we'll keep you up to speed here. We'll return most of you to normal programming. I'm Craig Melvin. This has been an NBC News special report.